when it comes to influencing emotion and atmosphere, music, and more broadly sound design, is perhaps the most powerful tool available to filmmakers. Get down, get down. Yeah. Both mood and meaning can be influenced and led by music. Music can engage the audience emotionally far quicker than other non-narrative tools. Unlike camera movement, or shot composition, or even performance, music, if used carefully, can both tell people who aren't paying attention what's going on, and also inform the image and the narrative. Silent movies, shown in accompaniment to music, are a great example of what I mean by informing the image and narrative. The music's important in selling the energy of the image, but changes in tempo and melodic changes give cues, or they provide character. Ennio Morricone's music is important in driving a lot of the tension behind the iconic showdown of the good, the bad and the ugly. But it also informs atmosphere, the feeling, and that informs meaning. Coupled with the same shots, different pieces of music can create vastly different feelings. We can make the sequence feel not quite as creepy and more fun with something like this. Or we can put in diegetic sound, that sound that is occurring or is implied to be occurring within the film world and add atmosphere that way. The change of music in those basement shots of Jumbo Manor doesn't change what happens, but it does change the presentation. Just as if we took an oversaturated, happy image and put a weird filter over it, music changes the flavour, but not the substance. Just needed the good tickle. <laughs> the key to faking out the parents is the clammy hands. Or, if you're looking at it analytically, the use of music tells us about the film and what it's trying to be, successfully or not. Music can, and does, influence how we feel about sequences, locations, and characters. If we meet a character for the first time, like this... It gives us a very different 10 second impression to this. Or this. But music and sound design can be more than just that. It can add cues and emphasise important moments. Here, in The Night of the Generals, the music not only emphasises drama, it reflects the psyche of the character we're focusing on, the could-do-with-a-care-package General Tans. Much like this famous scene from Psycho, the music works in tandem with the image and combined is more effective than either alone. And the way music emphasises changes things too. If a character in a film, for example, breaks the fourth wall, there is no doubt meaning there, depending on the context, but if we add music, 
we can emphasize the importance of the moment in different ways. We can make it feel like a reveal. Or we can make it feel ominous and threatening. Or we can make it fun. The Magic of Tuba, my first solo album. Music can also be used to change the meaning in non-fiction, too. This is easily exemplified in modern news reading, which is often accompanied by hyper-serious music. In fiction, sound can't act alone. It has to work with the visuals. There, I cut to the second angle, on the beat, and then put in a faux track in that I think works well with the tempo of the music I chose. These things have to work in tandem to be effective. The music in John Wick would be just as blood pumping, but I feel far less effective if the same action was viewed from a single, unmoving, unbroken wide. Even when the application is done well, use of music isn't always appropriate, even when it can be effective. And I think a lot of that comes down to whether music informs and enhances the tone or leads it. Important to note, I'm not necessarily talking about subtlety. There are many films with subtle scores where the use of music enhances tone without ever being intrusive or perhaps ever being noticed. However, there are also scores that aren't like that, but are still appropriate and complementary. A good example of such is Basil Polduris' work for Starship Troopers. Then, anger. The only good bug is a dead bug. In Geneva, the Federal Council convenes. We must meet the threat with our valor, our blood, indeed with our very lives, to ensure that human civilization not insect, dominates this galaxy now and always. The film is ironic and so is the score. In fact, I think it's pretty important in selling the fascistic future Starship Troopers is set in. Non-subtle pieces don't have to be meta to work though. Morricone's almost operatic music at the end of Once Upon a Time in the West evokes emotion, but it isn't filling in any gaps and it isn't there to rescue a listless film. The film's showdown is perhaps one of the greatest acts of on-screen revenge, and the score is a big part of it, but it never feels as though the other components are letting the music do the work. It never feels as if the music is rescuing what would otherwise be an unremarkable scene, or that it's telling us what to think and feel. And I think that's an error that some filmmakers, and perhaps more so studios, often find themselves committing. In big films, it often seems that music isn't used to enhance tone, but rather just create one. Did it just move? Life seems to be a little guilty of this, but there are many examples. Ah, please, I said shoot me! Too slow! Fast as you can! I think what it comes down to is just like performance, or writing, or direction, or really anything, music and its use can be hackneyed without the technique being flawed. And yes, I've done it again. I'm talking about Ran. In Ran, we see a tried and true technique done right, musical juxtaposition. Yes, it's sad, but you might expect the music in a battle scene to be more kinetic, even if it is somber. In Face Slash Off, we get the Fisher-Price version. My point is, the use is the same, but in Face Off, it's all style over substance. It comes down to sincerity and intention, and you can't fake those. I think there is far clearer meaning behind Toru Takamitsu's music and the way Akira Kurosawa has used it in Ran than there is in Face Off. There's no formula, of course, but I'd argue that this is the key. The music in Ran informs the atmosphere, but atmosphere would exist too, even if the music was absent. It informs meaning, 
but not cheaply. It isn't used as a fix for a problem with the scene. Like any other component of film, music can drive atmosphere and change meaning. But also like any other component, if it's relied upon too heavily, its effect diminishes. It's like having graphic imagery multiple times in a film. The first time, it might hit us emotionally. The second time, it might hit us again. By the eighth time, who cares? Like an actor's performance or shooting in a specific way, music can change as little or as much in terms of meaning and atmosphere as the filmmaker wants. It's very emotionally powerful, and unlike performance or shooting, it can be changed at any time in the edit, and that's why it's so often used as a crutch. That's why films cannibalised by their own studios often rely on it to the point where you wonder if anyone involved ever saw a movie before. Planning and nuance takes time and thought, and why bother when you can jam in five pop songs in ten minutes? But there you go. Anyway, this was a real pleasure to make because I got to play with my dollies. Thanks for watching. Oi, Batman, I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. Leave me alone, Terry. Right up, Batman, right up with a straw. You don't even know. You'll look down at your milkshake one day and there'll just be nothing there because I'll have drunk your milkshake.